السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومواله We're reading in the book Riyadh al-Salihin and we're reading the fourth chapter of this book which is Bab al-Sidq, the chapter on truthfulness and today insha'Allah ta'ala we will read the last two hadiths of this chapter in hadith number 58, Imam al-Nawawi says, Al-Khamis, An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the fifth hadith of this chapter, which is on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah. May Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, غزى نبي من الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم فقال لقومه لا يتبعني رجل ملك بضع امرأة وهو يريد أن يبني بها ولما يبني بها ولا أحد بنى بيوتا لم يرفع سقوفها ولا أحد اشترى غنما أو خليفات وهو ينتظر أولادها فغزى so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a prophet from the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi may Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them he said to his people and this prophet is actually Yusha Yusha ibn Noon Yusha ibn Noon is he mentioned in the Quran? Yes, but not by name. Yes. Yusha bin Noon is mentioned in the Quran, but not by name. His name is mentioned in the Sunnah. He is mentioned, you all know him. He is the young companion of Musa alayhi salam in the story of Surah Al Kahf, uh, the story of Musa and Khadr, when Musa alayhi salam sets out to find Al Khadr. He is with a young man. Right? That young man is Yusha bin Noon. He later becomes a prophet. And uh, he is mentioned also in the Bible. His name is Joshua. Uh, the Bible has a whole book called the Book of Joshua. And uh, in the Bible, he's also Joshua, the son of Noon. Yusha bin Noon. So this is a story about him. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that he uh, waged a battle, and before the battle began, he said to his people, "This is the battle to conquer um, Jericho." You guys know Jericho? Jericho is the famous city in Palestine. In Philistine. So there is a great battle that took place and that whole account is mentioned in the Bible as well. So uh, Yusha bin Nun, before the battle began, he said to his people, I don't want any man from you to follow me in this battle who is married to a woman and he has not consummated the marriage yet, and he wants to consummate the marriage. Imagine somebody who has gotten married, has done the nikah, but has not consummated the marriage, and he would like to consummate the marriage. And then the call was made for this battle. So Yusha bin Nun is saying, I don't want anybody like that following me, because he knows that such a person is not going to be interested in the battle. And he's going to become the weakest link, and your group is only as strong as the weakest link. Then he says, and I also don't want, wala ahadun bana buyutam lam yarfa sukufaha. I also don't want anyone who has been constructing a house for himself, but he has not finished the roof. So it's in the middle of the construction. Same thing. Your mind is going to be preoccupied over there, you're not going to fight. Sincerely, with full enthusiasm, I don't want you. Wala ahadun ishtara ghanaman aw khalifatin wa huyan tadiru awlada. 
I don't, also don't want anybody following me in this army who has purchased some livestock, some goats, sheep, lamb, etc. And those animals are pregnant and he's waiting for them to give birth. They're about to give birth and he's waiting for them to give birth. Same thing. His mind is going to be preoccupied with his livestock. He's not going to fight with valor, with vigor, with enthusiasm. I don't want you. Faghaza. And then he took whoever was with him and he went ahead and he began the battle. فَدَنَا مِنَ الْقَرْيَةِ صَلَاةَ الْعَصْرِ أَوْ قَرِيبًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَقَالَ لِلشَّمْسِ إِنَّكِ مَأْمُورَةٌ وَأَنَا مَأْمُورٌ اللهم احبسها علينا فحبست حتى فتح الله عليه سبحان الله so he uh, got close to the qarya to the to the town which is the town of Jericho um, and it was time for asr or close to the time of asr and he looked at the sun and he said started talking to the sun and he said, you are operating under the command of Allah. And I am also operating under the command of Allah. And then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh Allah, stop it for us. Stop the sun from setting because I have been commanded to conquer this city today and the day is about to end. So stop its movement, stop its motion. Fahubisat, so the sun, it was made to remain still until Allah gave him victory, until Allah liberated the city at his hands. This is a miracle. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. This is a miracle. It's an amazing miracle. We can't really understand how this can happen. But that is the case with every miracle that is mentioned in the Quran. Can you make sense out of a baby speaking from the cradle? Can you make sense of a woman giving birth without ever having been touched by a man? These are miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as believers believe in them. Even though scientifically we cannot explain them. But we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to do anything. He is the one who has made it so that when you put something in the fire, it will burn. But He is the one who does that. And if He wants to, He can stop that from happening. And that's what happened with Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is the one who has made it so that the sun rises and sets every day and it doesn't stop. But if he wants to, he can make it stop without any consequences happening on this earth. How? Allahu A'lam. What's amazing is that this miracle is also mentioned in the Bible. It is also mentioned in the Bible. Now, in the times that we live in, the time of scientism, Many Christians go to their priests questioning this passage in the Bible. How can it be that the sun is made still? How can it be? It doesn't make any sense. And they have to answer. Those who are true believers among the Christians, they have to answer. In the same way that we answer. We believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is all powerful. This is a matter of faith. And believers are those who yu'minuna bil ghayb. We believe in the unseen. There are things that we do not understand, that we do not see, that we do not perceive. There are things beyond our knowledge, our intellect. As believers, we believe in them. We believe in them. We believe in angels. Not a rational thing to believe in angels. They are supra-rational creatures. So, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, hadith is sound, so we believe in it. And then it says, فَجَمَعَ الْغَنَائِمْ 
Then this Prophet of Allah, Yusha, he collected the spoils of war in one place. Began to collect all the spoils of war in one place. فَجَاءَتْ يَعْنِ النَّارِ لِتَأْكُلَهَا فَلَمْ تَطْعَمْهَا And then the fire came to eat it, but it didn't even touch it. This was the uh, uh, practice in Bani Israel. This is what they were commanded to do, that when they would wage battle, they won the battle, they would take the spoils of war and gather it in one place. And then a thunderbolt would come down and eat up the, uh, uh, the spoils of war. But this time the thunderbolt didn't even touch the spoils of war. It came, it came but didn't even touch the spoils of war. فَقَالَ So the Yusha said to his people, إِنَّ فِيكُمْ غُلُولَ Somebody amongst you, talking to his soldiers, somebody amongst you has cheated us. In other words, somebody has kept a portion of the spoils of war. And because we have not presented all the spoils of war, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not accepting it. مِن كُلِّ قَبِيلَةٍ رَجُلٍ so I want from every qabila, from every tribe, one representative. Come forward and give me your hand. Put your hand in my hand. Give me bay'ah, give me your pledge. فَلَذِقَتْ يَدُ رَجُلٍ بِيَدِهِ فَقَالَ فِيكُمُ الْغُلُولِ So one by one, every tribe sent their representative. Until one man, he placed his hand in the hand of Yusha, and it clung to it. it, it like, it's like glue, it's not coming off. So Yusha said, your tribe has the cheater, your tribe has the cheater. Now I want every person from your tribe to come one by one and pledge allegiance to me in my hand. فَلَذِقَتْ يَدُ رَجُلَيْنِ أَوْ قَالَ ثَلَاثَةٍ بِيَدِهِ فَقَالَ فِيكُمُ الْغُلُولِ And so, when they came one by one, there were two or three, there were two or three men from that tribe who were basically caught because their hand stuck to the hand of Yusha. So Yusha said, you are the ones who have cheated. فَجَاءُوا بِرَأْسٍ مِثْلِ رَأْسِ بَقَرَةٍ مِنَ الزَّهَرِ So they went and they brought a head like the head of a cow from, made from gold. A head like the head of a cow made from gold. <coughs> you know in those days <coughs> they would go out <coughs> to fight in the battle <coughs> <clears throat> and even the armor that they wore <coughs> was made from gold and silver. The armor, the, the chain mail, the swords, right? So there was a lot of gold and silver that was brought onto the battlefields. And then the winners would collect that as spoils of war. <clears throat> so they brought this uh, in front of uh, Yusha bin Nun. فَوَضَعَهَا فَجَاءَتِ النَّارُ فَأَكَلَتْهَا So he placed that gold now with the rest of the spoils of war and then the thunderbolt came and ate all the, consumed all the uh, spoils of war. فَلَمْ تَحِلَّ الْغَنَائِمُ لِأَحَدٍ قَبْلَنَا ثُمَّ أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَنَا الْغَنَائِمُ so the Prophet ﷺ said, commenting on this story, that the ghanaim, the spoils of war, were not made permissible for anyone before us. The spoils of war were not made permissible, meaning 
that it was not allowed for the winners of a battle to take the spoils of war. For any of the prophets before me, they were made permissible for us. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw our weakness, so He made them halal for us. <clears throat> and this is one of the unique features of the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said that he was given a number of things as favors from Allah that Allah did not give to any Nabi before him. A number of favors. Among them is the fact that we can pray anywhere on this earth. Not just making dua, our ritual prayer. Not just making dua, our ritual, the, the act of worship that other people can only do in their temples. We, the worship that we do in our temple, in our masjid, we can do that worship anywhere on this earth. That is only for this ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu And this is another one of those things that the spoils of war were made halal for the mujahideen, for the winners of uh, a battle in Islam. Like I said, this hadith is related by Bukhari and Muslim. The reason why Imam al nawi placed this hadith in this chapter is because it talks about the importance of truth, truthfulness. These people, <clears throat> until they were honest and came out and brought everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept their spoils of war until they were truthful in what they presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course there are many other things that we learn from this hadith. The, uh, the, great, uh, the greatness of this prophet of Allah, Yusha bin Nun, and the great miracle that was performed at his hands, and so on and so forth. The final hadith of this chapter is a short hadith. Qala <coughs> as عن أبي خالد حكيم بن حزام رضي الله تعالى عنه. This is the sixth and final hadith of this chapter on the authority of Abu Khalid Hakim بن حزام. May Allah be pleased with him. Who said, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, البيعان بالخيار ما لم يتفرقا فإن صدق وبينا بورك لهما في بيعهما. وَإِنْ كَذَبَ وَكَتَمَ مُحِقَتْ بَرَكَةُ بَيْعِهِنَا مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ He said <coughs> that the buyer and seller in any transaction, there's a buyer and there's a seller, they're called al-bayyan, al-ba'i'a mushtari The buyer and the seller, bil khiyar, they have the option to cancel the transaction ma lam yatafarraqa, as long as they have not separated from one another. This is something unique in Islam. <coughs> According to uh, the majority of the scholars, it's called Khiyarul Majlis. <coughs> Khiyarul Majlis, Mufti Abrar spoke about it when he came and did the seminar on commercial law. That whenever you are having a transaction, imagine that, <coughs> imagine that you saw something on sale uh, on Craigslist. You saw that somebody is selling um, a phone, okay, uh, an iPhone 12. How much an iPhone 12 going for these days? Used one. iPhone 12, huh? $500? $500, okay. <clears throat> $500. So you meet that, mashallah, find out that's a brother, Muslim brother. Okay. Meet him in the parking lot of the masjid. <clears throat> parking lot of the masjid. He brings the phone. You bring the five hundred dollars, right? <clears throat> and then you start to. You're a Muslim, of course. You're going to negotiate, right? That's what we Muslims do, right? So negotiate. You know, it's not. It's got a scratch here. It's got a scratch there. Make it four hundred. No, four hundred. I can't do four hundred. It's not that big of a scratch, right? Okay, 450. 450, 450. Okay, agreed. 450. You give 450, the brother gives you the phone. 
Is the transaction done? Transaction is done. Transaction is done. You have given him the money, you have taken the phone. Now imagine that after a few minutes, <clears throat> you're looking at the phone and you're like, 450 is just too much for this phone. I'm going to take it home and I'm going to tell my wife I spent 450. She's going to be upset. So I say to the, the brother, brother, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot, I, I changed my mind. Here, take it, take, give me my money back. This is called khiyarul majlis. If the brother says, no, I'm not going to give you your money back, I can take him to court. And the court will force him to give my money back. Why? Because we are still in the same majlis, we have not separated. If I had left the parking lot, went home, and then changed my mind, I would not be able to cancel the sale on the grounds of khiyarul majlis. I might be able to do it on some other grounds, like khiyarul aib, which is because I found a defect in the item. That's a different grounds. But this is, I haven't found any defect. The only grounds that I have is, we haven't parted ways yet. Yes, we have settled the agreement. I have signed the papers. But we are still in the same majlis. Yes, I closed on the deal, on the house. I signed all those hundreds of papers that you sign on the day of the closing. But the, 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 the notary hasn't left the house yet. They're still, they're, we're still in the same majlis. I can cancel the sale. This is called khiyarul majlis. So this hadith is saying that both the buyer and the seller, both sides have the right. Both sides have the right to cancel the sale, cancel the agreement, as long as they have not parted ways from one another. Fa'in. Then, if they part ways, they don't cancel the agreement, and they part ways, now the sale is final, then what happens? Rasulullah says that if they have both been truthful to one another, if they've both been truthful to one another, and they have pointed out any defects, because that's, that's our duty as Muslims, when we sell something to someone, and we know that it has a defect, we should point it out. So he is saying that if they have done that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in this transaction. He will put barakah in this transaction. So that I take this phone and it will last. Or I take that money and it will stay. I will benefit from it. But if that is not the case, if they have lied to one another, or if they have try to conceal and hide things from one another, then muhiqat barakatu bay'ihima The barakah is removed from that transaction. So yes, I may think that I have made a lot of money, $450, but you know what, I'm going to get home and I'm going to find maybe that the AC is not working. And I have to spend now $5,000 to fix my AC. That's a loss of barakah that happens when we do things like that. So this is another hadith that teaches us the importance to be truthful, especially in our commercial transactions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them.